Alright, what's going on everyone, and welcome to the series in which I introduce you to all of the most powerful competitive decks in the modern format. The goal here isn't to give an exact deck list as those change constantly, but rather to give you a brief overview of how the deck works so you can be prepared if you're new to modern, if you're going to be playing modern, if you're looking for a modern deck, this will hopefully just give you an idea of how this deck works and what to expect if you get matched up against it. So today we're looking at Hammer Time. This was once a meme casual deck, it was a silly casual funny deck, ha ha ha, what a silly stupid deck, and now it's one of the best decks in modern, so uh, this is modern now. So the deck is named after Colossus Hammer, it's a 1 mana artifact that gives the creature plus 10 plus 10, which is a ton of power for a 1 mana artifact, but the problem is it costs 8 mana to equip. However, the deck circumvents that cost by playing Sigarda's Aid, which is a 1 mana enchantment that lets you cast equipment at instant speed and then allows you to equip them for free when they hit the battlefield, meaning we can have an equipped Colossus Hammer on turn 2. Not only on turn 2, but it can be attached to an attacking creature on turn 2 because the deck plays Memnite and Ornithopter, so these are 0 mana artifact creatures that can be played on turn 1, right? Like turn 1 you could play Sigarda's Aid and a Memnite, turn 2 you could play a Colossus Hammer, equip it for free, and swing for 11. So that's uh, that's what this deck is doing, it is casting free creatures, Sigarda's Aid, and a Colossus Hammer, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. The deck also typically plays Pure Steel Paladin, it'll let you draw cards when you cast equipment, and it gives you another way to equip for 0 if you control 3 artifacts, which is pretty easy in this deck, it is an artifact focused deck, it can equip for 0, so that's 2 ways that you can equip for 0 mana. So to help find the hammer, the deck plays things like Ingenious Smith and Stoneforge Mystic, the first lets you look at the top 4 cards of your library for an artifact, and it will also get a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we play an artifact once per turn, and the Mystic can tutor for any piece of equipment when it enters the battlefield, so both of these allow you to find Colossus Hammer. Um, some decks also run Steel Shaper's Gift, typically 1 or 2, but uh, it's a 1 mana spell, tutors up an equipment, pretty simple. So the deck has 3 ways to find Colossus Hammer, it has Smith, Mystic, and Steel Shaper's Gift, all of these can find Colossus Hammer, oh and technically there's Urza Saga, so there's sort of 4 ways to find it, but more on that later. So 3 to 4 ways to find the hammer, and then 2 ways to equip it for free, with Sigarda's Aid and Pure Steel Paladin. So basically, it's pretty consistent at getting that hammer in play and smashing face with it, which is why it's a top tier deck. And I do want to make a quick note before we move on that there is an Orzhov equipment deck called Orzhov Stoneblade that also uses Stoneforge Mystic, typically finds things like Badger Skull and Cauldra Complete. This deck was actually more popular first, uh, Orzhov Stoneblade was the sort of premier black white equipment deck, and at this point they are, they, they do sort of overlap, you do find Orzhov Stoneblade decks that have Colossus Hammer in them. The big difference is that the Hammer Time deck is a Lurus deck, so it can't play Batter Skull and Cauldra Complete, and it's much more artifact focused. Whereas the Orzhov Stoneblade deck, even though they both play Stoneforge, Mystic, and Equipment, the Stoneblade deck is much more mid-rangey, with more spot removal, more hand disruption, um, it sometimes plays creatures like Dark Confidant, Torog, stuff like this. It's just a, it's it's more controlling, it's a, it's more of a control deck, whereas the Hammer Time deck is more of a, an aggressive, artifact based, you know, get the hammer in and start smashing with it sort of thing. So in addition to everything we've seen so far, it also plays Esper Sentinel, Springleaf Drum, Cranial Plating, these are all just uh, a, a typical artifact cards. Uh, Esper Sentinel, it forces the opponent to pay attacks and if they don't we get the draw. Springleaf Drum is free mana basically because you can tap your zero drop, so you can tap a land, play this, but then tap a zero drop so it doesn't really cost you anything to play it, and then it ramps you. Cranial Plating gives plus one plus zero for each artifact we control and we control a lot of them typically. Very typical artifact inclusions. Also note that cranial plating can be slapped onto an ornithopter which has flying and uh, that turns ornithopter into a very deadly threat. It's also common for the deck to run one copy of Shadow Spear and four Urza Saga in the mana base. So Shadow Spear gives the creature life, link, and trample. And Urza Saga, once it gets to level 2, it can produce artifact 
creature tokens that have power and toughness equal to your artifact count, but then once it gets to level 3, it sacrifices and tutors up a one-drop artifact which can find Shadow Spear or Colossus Hammer. So uh, this package, these two cards, and a lot of modern decks, and uh, it works perfectly well here. It's another way to find Colossus Hammer. And this deck is also a Lurus deck, like I mentioned before. So you typically find Mishra's Bobble in the main board. Lurus forces you to only play low-cost permanents in your deck, which is fine because Colossus Hammer technically only costs one mana, so it fits the Lurus restriction. But then Lurus lets you recast something from your graveyard every turn and the bauble it's a free artifact zero mana artifact on the battlefield helps to get metalcraft with pure steel paladin but if you have Lurus, you can sacrifice it draw a card then use Lurus to replay it and basically get a card every turn assuming you don't have better stuff to play in your graveyard already so uh yeah that's another common combination most Lurus decks play mishra's bauble just because it's free it draws a card it replaces itself and once you have Lurus, it gives you a constant source of cards the deck also frequently plays one or two copies of Thoughtseize and some will also run like Portable Hole as removal. This is a very proactive deck. It's not really looking to interact too much, but Thoughtseize is common. You typically see one or two copies. Portable Hole, less common, but you see that as well from time to time. The deck also has one more notable land in the form of Ink Moth Nexus. It animates into a 1-1 flyer with Infect, and that's pretty crazy with Colossus Hammer because it can kill the opponent in a single attack. Remember that it does lose flying, that's important to note, but if your opponent is fully tapped out, you can animate the Ink Moth Nexus, you can equip the Colossus Hammer if you have it in hand, and swing with 10 Infect, the opponent gets 10 poison counters, dies instantly. So you basically have this constant threat. The opponent constantly has to be aware when you have Ink Moth Nexus that you can one-shot them at any time. So they constantly have to play around that. And if players don't know that, if they don't know that's a possibility, then you can just get free wins. So there's that. And basically that's the general idea of Hammer Time. Of course, as always, this is just meant to be an overview of the deck. There are a ton of variations between deck to deck. Every deck runs with some different cards here and there, including the entirely different builds focused on uh, Stoneforge Mystic, the Orzhov Stoneblade deck, stuff like that. So yeah, there's lots of variation. There's different uh, builds of the deck, but the general idea is that you want to play Colossus Hammer, you want to equip it for free, and you want to smash face. That's the Hammer Time deck in a nutshell. And of course, things are always subject to change, so check the description below for the most up-to-date deck list. I will leave links to various metagame tracking websites so you can see the different builds of Hammer Time right now, and also see the most up-to-date list if you watch this at a later date. People occasionally leave comments saying, hey, you mentioned this card in the video, but that's not even played. Yes, um, of course, modern changes, decks change with time. So if you're watching this a few months from now, a year from now, whatever, check those links in the description and you will see the most up-to-date lists when you watch this video. So there you go, guys. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how preposterous Hammer Time is. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.